Hi, everyone. Welcome to class today. This is missions mobilization class here at Trinity Bible College in graduate school. So welcome those of you that are watching online, kind of uh, being a part of our discussion today as we talk about diverse mobilization. My name is Dave Jacob. I'm the founder and the director of the Center of, for Missionary Mobilization and Retention, and it's great to have you here. So I'm here with a few students who you don't see right now, but you'll hear them as we talk about uh, mobilizing diverse peoples today. So I want to first start off by asking the question. So students, those of you that are on with me today, uh, why is it even important that we're discussing this particular topic? Why is mobilizing a diverse missions force important to the kingdom? I think because the call to go wasn't meant for one specific people group or type of people it was meant for all of God's people and so we should um, be intentional about mobilizing all of God's people that's good yeah somebody else it's good to prepare and equip people who don't really know exactly quite what they're getting into and it can pre prepare them uh, mentally and spiritually and physically mm-hmm yeah, so what would be the, what are some of the benefits of having a diverse missions force? I would say a diverse perspective. Yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of when, when we were in Northern Asia, we had a lot of people just assume that uh, Christianity was, you know, the kind of the white man's religion, that uh, it was a religion that was only for the West, and that if you were white and living in this particular sensitive country that we lived in, um, then you, you were automatically a Christian. Uh, it was just assumed. And so it was kind of seen as the white man's religion. Um, and of course, there's been a lot of mistakes in missions past and missions history, which we definitely need to address and we need to talk about um to make sure that they don't happen again right um so it can be you know having a diverse diversity in our missionaries uh it really sends a message to the rest of the world that this is not just the white man's religion that this religion is for everyone that this relationship is for everyone right and um and it's visible, then it's, 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 you can see that diversity. Uh, and so there's representation in there, which we'll get into in a little bit. So yeah, it's very important for mobilization that we, uh, that we work on mobilizing diverse peoples. And, and that's going to take some intentionality on your part. And we'll, we'll get into it another day, probably later this week, about um, what are some practical ideas that we have to uh, mobilize a diverse missions force and what, what is diversity, we'll get into that in a minute as well. So um, what are some factors though that you know, we've just had a unit that where we looked at some of the barriers to missions mobilization, what are some factors that prevent diverse mobilization? Only choosing uh, churches and populations of uh, white or certain ethnicities. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe as mobilizers, we're only going to those white affluent churches in the suburbs, and we're not going to some of the other churches where these different ethnicities are located. So again, intentionality or a lack of intentionality would definitely prevent diverse mobilization. So not visiting those churches uh, is, is definitely a, a barrier. What else? What are some other, um, some other factors that would prevent us having a diverse missions force? Um, maybe family could be one that is, can be especially like, uh, applicable to other ethnicities as a lot of other cultures value family a lot more so if you don't have your family's backing in it then that could 
be a big hindrance. Absolutely. Very good insight. Um, yeah, the whole family dynamic is different. And we'll talk about that in a little bit here as we go on today, but that can certainly be uh, a barrier. You know, another barrier is that, um, again, that, that Christianity is just from the West. And so we, we also need to work at mobilizing those from other countries. You know, there's some neat organizations that are helping to mobilize others from other countries around the world. And so uh, this again shows that it's not just, you know, from the West to the rest of the world, right? Missions is not just from the West to the rest, it's from everywhere to everywhere. And so uh, having di a different nationalities even of missionaries is uh, a great benefit to the expansion of the kingdom around the world. So there's certainly some uh, some other factors, maybe some fundraising issues that uh, that we'll look at, but certainly there are some factors that prevent diverse mobilization. So if you're watching this video after this class, it may be a good idea for you to sit down with your team and brainstorm this question as well. So you can pause the video now and do that and talk about what factors prevent or preventing you uh, from mobilizing a, a diverse missions force. One of those factors um, that we've recently looked at, and as some of you know, Kobe is helping with this research, but we recently interviewed 62 different mission agencies. We gave them a survey. And one of the questions that we asked them is listed here on the screen about what factors listed below, and we gave them some choices, do you include in mobilizer training? So this was a mission agency mobilization training survey. And we wanted to look at when a new missions mobilizer is hired at a mission agency, uh, are they trained? If so, what are they trained on? Uh, how long is their training? We're looking at some of these things and are currently still analyzing the data. And so here are the answers when we ask this particular question, what factors listed below do you include when you hire a new mobilizer? Do you include in training them? And so here were those responses. Uh, at the, at the, the top of the list really was that general organizational orientation. So um, you can see some of these responses here on my screen. CRM is customer relations management. So as you know, every organization, usually nonprofits have a CRM type of, even, even businesses have the CRM software where they keep track of their customers. And so a lot of them, 57% said they train their new mobilizers on that. Pipeline procedures would be those procedures from when someone uh, first inquires to become a missionary with the agency. Maybe that's through an email or through a phone call or some type of contact form on their website. That comes in. These people are then put into what we call the pipeline, right? And they go through. The next is the application process. And then there's some selection, some interviewing. Um, so all these different things uh, agencies trained their new mobilizers on. But if you look down towards the bottom here, training related to different ethnicities or race, it was the absolute lowest response. So only 13% of the respondents in this survey indicated that uh, they do any type of training on different ethnicities or different races uh, when a new mobilizer is brought on. So, you know, that is a bit of a, a problem, in my opinion, and uh, it would be really important for mission agencies as they're bringing on staff and uh, specifically as we're talking about mobilization staff here, that they are trained in some of this uh, diverse mobilization and some of these factors, some of the things, frankly, that we're talking about today. So uh, one of the, the factors that are hindering 
uh, or preventing diverse mobilization is this, that a lot of our agencies aren't really addressing it. And that could be for a variety of reasons. It could be because there's not very much uh, training materials out there on how to diverse, how to mobilize a uh, diverse missionary force. And so that's one of the things that we here at the Center for Missionary Mobilization and Retention are trying to uh, help to curate some of these and to, uh, to, to create and to curate some of these resources. Uh, and we'll put a bunch of links in the comments that you can go to if you wanna study this topic further. So uh, let's move on here a little bit and let's look at some considerations for mobilizing these different, uh, different diverse people group segments. And there could be more. So what well, I've listed on here are African-Americans, Asians, Hispanics, people with impairments and retirees, but there could be others. So as we talk about this, uh, I, I want you to begin to think about if there are other population segments that maybe we haven't included here that we should be intentional about mobilizing. So uh, first, I think one of the major ones, and of course your, your reading students for today was on uh, an article in the Missionary Mobilization Journal about mobilizing African Americans and uh, some of your questions that you've put in the chat box alluded to this. So what are some considerations for mobilizing African Americans. Let's just look at that one. What are some things that you read about and even some of the questions that you had? Well, first thing they should do is they should like try to grow a team of African American people that can um, discuss and um, best like plan out like what's the what's the best way to reach like my my fellow man, you know? Mm -hmm. And um just kind of go from there, you know. Yeah, that's a, a great idea. Is your staff, that would be a great place to start and to ask yourself, is your staff diverse, right? Or do you have volunteers from diff a variety of backgrounds that can come and assist you uh, with some of these goals that you might have? So, of course, the civil rights movement with Jim Crow laws as uh, as African Americans were discriminated against, they banded together and had to work to um, to get their you know for the, for their own rights. They had to work to, in order to help themselves for their own survival here in our country. And so, uh, part of this then has allowed has. Uh, enabled the African American church to be a little bit more maybe inward looking when it comes to missions. They would, uh, uh, a lot of them look to their own communities. Of course, uh, that's the case for a lot of our churches in the states here. But due to racism, um, this has hindered African American involvement in uh, uh, cross cultural missions. And so because they've had to survive, they've had to take care of their own. And that's certainly understandable. Uh, there's a great organization called the National African American Missions Council, or NAMAC for short. And uh, we'll put a link in the comments. They work to uh, mobilize uh, more African Americans to the mission field, and they got scholarships and a conference in the summer, and they're just doing an incredible job. So part of it is understanding the history of African Americans in our own country here and where where their church is. You know, uh, I, I spoke with one African American pastor's wife who grew up never hearing a sermon about cross cultural missions at all, and so. Obviously, if you grow up in that type of context, uh, missions cross-culturally is not, is not on your radar for the most part. So also representation or a lack of representation is a factor when it comes to mobilizing African Americans. Does anybody know what I mean by that? Most missionaries that people see coming in, like uh, not just fundraising, but talking about what they're doing, most of them aren't African American or of any other ethnicity, most are uh, white. Yes, absolutely. And so 
uh, as an African American girl or boy, when you see missionaries come to your church, oftentimes they're white, and the unspoken message is that cross cultural missions is not for African. It's not for somebody like me, right? It's it's for a white person. So uh, the more that we can get a diverse missions force, and uh, uh, as as it grows, then um, those can they can speak into in their in their own churches in their own context and you have that then representation which can certainly help so um let's move on and talk about asians and even hispanics and kobe alluded to this earlier in our class today about uh family what are some family considerations family dynamics that we need to understand in order to mobilize Asians or Hispanics specifically? They are very family oriented, as uh, Kobe said, and um, it'd take a, if they're not for it, then that obviously like hurts the person, the individual and hinders whether or not they want to. So um is something that's something that would take time and something that we would need to like kind of press into until they know they just can't not do it yeah yeah so this this these strong family ties um oftentimes are are quite a bit stronger than your average caucasian american family and so um this definitely mom and dad's influence is even stronger another factor here is that uh, you know they've worked awful hard in order to send their child off to college, whether it be Bible college or some other type if they're going into a business's mission endeavor. And then to have their child then graduate college and go beg people for money, right? To go fundraise seems to be contradictory. And so this has been another hurdle that, um, that needs to be addressed. And so for mobilizers, it's important that we understand this dynamic and then we, we walk with people, that we walk with parents even through this and we have these discussions. So, um, okay, let's move on to people with impairments. Um, people with impairments is another population segment that we maybe often don't think about mobilizing um, because of some of their challenges, right? Some of their special needs. Uh, so what are some considerations? What are some things that we as mobilizers should think about, should know, or should do if we wanna mobilize people with impairments? Um, I'd say like the first thing I'd think of if I was impaired was like, oh, I can't do this because I'm not equipped. And yeah. so um, it's important for us to give them words of encouragement and saying that whatever they do matters and um, whatever they can do to help, um, we are helping, we are willing to help them get to that point. Um, Cause I'd say that's like the main hindrance of why they don't even, they don't even try is because they don't want to go through the roadblocks or they don't want to be a burden on someone else's shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good point. Sometimes perhaps it's in our own minds, right? Our, even even those that uh, may not have a lot of physical impairments, we have limitations in our own minds about what we can or can't do, or maybe what God can or can't do through us. And so uh, absolutely that encouragement and um, helping them to overcome some of their, maybe these thinking patterns. Uh, but representation, again, is a big factor here. How many uh, missionaries do you know that have uh, that are people you consider they have impairments or they have special needs? Um, probably not a lot, right? So uh, there's a great book out, out there. I'm trying to think of the title, Disability in Mission, I think is what it's called by Dave Duell. We'll try to put a link uh, in the comments about that. Um, it's a great book about this very topic and mobilizing people with impairments. Um, another consideration in this, uh, mobilizing people with impairments, is that they're going to need additional tools, right? So uh, for those of you who are, uh, you wear glasses, 
you, that's considered a physical impairment, right? So I am legally blind without my glasses on. I cannot read the screen in front of me right now without my glasses. So, and I just got trifocals. So these babies, uh, so this is, this is a tool, right? That, uh, that I need in order to minister effectively. And there are numerous tools out there that you and I have probably never even heard about that can uh, assist people with impairments to do their jobs and can do ministry in incredible, incredible ways. And so it's a matter of finding those tools and uh, working with that person that feels called by God. So again, this is something we can be intentional about. All right, what about retirees? What are some things we should know about retirees? What are some things that might hinder them from getting to the field? What are some things that we can do to uh, help mobilize them? Uh, the sort of retirement mindset that you've worked your whole life and now it's time to take a break and relax. That's a big hindrance. So I think to mobilize them, it's important to show them that there's still a place for them, especially in the kingdom of God, um, that you don't just like retire from uh, being a Christian, you know, there's, there's still things that they can do and things that they should do. Yes, absolutely. A hearty amen to that. Um, that, yeah, this whole mindset of that, you know, I'm going to retire and now it's time to kind of live for me whether it's playing golf, you know, the stereotypical thing you do at retirement, right? Or, um, or whatever, uh, helping them to overcome this mindset that God still has a role and a purpose and a plan for your life and uh, that you can be involved in changing the narrative in, in countries uh, as retirees. So very good point. What are some other factors to, to know or to do when mobilizing retirees? there's going to be a lot of comfortability in where they are. I mean, they don't, they're, they've been working their whole lives. They've been working for this moment to not be able to work again. So there might be slight hesitation in um, going back to the field and feeling that they're called. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there could be factors of finance here, either that uh, some might be retiring with quite a lot of money and won't need to do fundraising, or some might be retiring with not much at all, right? And so walking through some of those uh, scenarios, retirement planning is going to be at the forefront of their minds, uh, their finances, their health. Uh, some of these factors are, are definitely some considerations. So are there other um, segments of people that we've left off when we talk about diverse mobilization, as we've been talking about this, have you thought of any other groups of people? Um, of course, we could put maybe nationals or those from other countries on here as well. What else could we add to our list? You think we've hit them all or certainly there's other, uh, other ethnicities that we could have mentioned uh first nations people or native americans here in the u.s would be a population segment that are currently not on our list here and uh of course there's other uh, ethnicities that we could list for sure um so what about um mobilizing kids is that a thing or not really i think that is another important thing um, not only for like the education and to like grow that passion within kids for the future, but they can be involved in ways like financial and writing letters, you know, support things for people on the field. And then uh, even like short term missions trips, fairly young uh, kids could go on something like that and kind of get that experience and knowledge. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, anybody else? Yeah, I mean, it, there's huge importance in kids. I mean, uh, with me being mobilized from a child, that's really like being called from a child that's really helped with like 
kind of always going back to that moment like yeah that's right I know this this and this and this and um even when they know it at that age they can like better like prepare themselves and I didn't do that because I'm not really you know <laughs> I didn't really take advantage of that but um there is an opportunity to uh ask questions early and um get things sorted out that you need to get sorted out you know definitely yeah very good point we could talk about mobilizing singles and uh you know families as well uh so that's another maybe the segment singles would have uh a different set of of needs a different set of pros and cons rather than families do and so uh, we've done a little bit of study on that and mobilizing singles but certainly there's pros and cons of both singles and families there are, there is that thought out there with some groups that uh, missionaries do need to be married before they get to the field I certainly wouldn't endorse that uh, but there is kind of that mindset out there so um, what can we do to mobilize more single missionaries, especially single men missionaries. There seems to be a, a lack of single men missionaries in the world. And so maybe again, if you're watching this afterwards, you can sit down with your team and uh, talk about these things. And so I uh, want to thank you for joining us. Uh, students remain online here, but if you're watching this video afterwards, uh, I want to thank you so much. Hope that this has been helpful. Please feel free to email us at hello at missionarymobilization.org if you have other thoughts or questions on this topic of mobilizing a diverse missionary force.